Welcome to the London Press Club Awards. I'm Doug Wills, Chair of the Press Club. You'll remember that at our awards last year, David Attenborough warned us all that we were on the edge of extinction. We didn't quite realise how soon. So, this year, Covid ripped up our news schedule and events planning. Today, the Press Club's long-anticipated awards for 2019 are revealed virtually. I have great pleasure in handing over to Chairman of our Press Club Awards judges, Nick Ferrari. Hello, I'm Nick Ferrari and I'm Chairman of the judges of the London Press Club Award. And just a word, actually, of tribute and praise to Bill Haggerty, who held that post for a, a number of years. And I'll raise a cup of coffee uh, to you, Bill, because it's a hell of a challenge. And now you've retired from that job, perhaps you could negotiate Brexit with your diplomatic skills. Uh, the judging panel, we met on March the 3rd for these awards, and what a different world it was then. People still went to things called offices. Do you remember those? You could go for a drink after work, go to the theatre, have a late meal in a restaurant without having to wear a, a hazmat suit or being treated like a criminal. And Boris Johnson was £26 pounds heavier and a bloody sight happier, I have to say. And, oh, Doug Wills still had hair. Well, some. What you're about to see is a representation of this fantastic industry, one I remember literally as a child because I would file copy for my father's president, Ferrari of Dartford. How many other people can say their first words were, yes, this is ordered, and no, there's not much more of this. And as we speak, the industry is confronted on every possible level. People are buying fewer newspapers. They're not going to railway stations or even supermarkets in some instances. And I've not even mentioned fake news. But put that to one side. Pour yourself a, a proper drink or have a coffee. Watch these awards. A fantastic tribute. Every one of them seriously challenged and debated and carefully considered. And celebrate the London Press Club Awards and tribute to the truly marvellous Her Majesty's Press. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's very good to see you, of course, sadly, not to be in person. And it's certainly third time lucky for Doug, Nick and the awards judges, as well as the sponsors, of course, uh, for getting us to this point. So thank you very much to them for all the hard work. Um, it's such a shame not to see everybody in person, but here we are. I hope and trust this finds you well, as well as can be expected in the current circumstances. And I look forward to congratulating all of you uh, who are winners here today. So let's start the awards now then, and we start with business journalists sponsored by Cision. The runner-ups here, and congratulations to you, are Ruth Sunderland, Daily Mail, and Jim Armitage, Evening Standard. And the winner for this award is Peter Smith and Owen Walker for the Financial Times. So congratulations, Peter Smith and Owen Walker for the Financial Times. The judges said the in-depth investigation into Woodford Investment Management was work of the highest quality, leading to the fall of its top stock picker, Neil Woodford, and his lieutenant, Craig Newman. With the invaluable assistance of fine research work by Anna Goss, or Goss, sorry, and Archie Hall, the FT team produced forensic probing that was said by the judges to be an extraordinary piece of quality journalism. Broadcast Journalist of the Year, sponsored by Associated British Ports. We have runners-up, my dear Emily, Emily Maitlis for the BBC, of course, and the wonderful Victoria Derbyshire for the BBC as well. Congratulations to my colleagues. The winner is another colleague, Andrew Neal. Congratulations, Andrew, for the BBC, as it was then. Thank you, London Press Club, for the honour of this award. It would not have been mine, but for the superb team at BBC Millbank, the best of the BBC, which always made sure I went into combat fully armed for any eventuality. I am well aware, of course, that this award is as much for the interview I didn't do as the ones I did. But this has been a strange year all round, so why not an award for the interview that never happened? It merely illustrates the originality and foresight of the London Press Club. Lying may your lum reek and other appropriate ethnic encouragements from the Scotlands. Print Journalist of the Year, sponsored by Cision. Runners up, Stephen Wright, Daily Mail, Claire Newell, Daily Telegraph. 
Congratulations, huge congratulations. The winner for Print Journalist of the Year is Anthony Lloyd for The Times. Congratulations, Anthony. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to receive this award. Thank you. The lessons for me working in Syria last year and finding Shamima Begum was that there is never a better alternative for a foreign correspondent in getting scoops or breaking stories than to be there on the ground, something which Zoom and virtual meetings can never replace. And that particular story, not only the fate of Shamima Begum, but the fate of thousands of European women and children who remain incarcerated in northern Syria, and how best, or even if, they can be assimilated into our societies again, remains one of the great pressing foreign concerns. Thank you. Digital Journalist of the Year, sponsored by the Madison Square Garden Company. For the runners-up, we must congratulate Emma Yule, The Huffington Post UK. Congratulations, Emma. And Paul Staines for Guido Fawkes. The winner is Matt Chorley, Redbox, The Times. Well, this is all very exciting. It started out as a, a, just an email, and then a podcast, and then a stand-up show. And now I'm so digital, I'm on digital radio. So uh, a huge thank you to the London Press Club. Uh, this is a great honour in a time when there's not a lot of good news. Some very nice news. <laughs> Scoop of the year, always a biggie, uh, goes, let's do the runners up of course, and we have the Sunday Times, Operation Yellowhammer, and for the Newsnight team, for the BBC, for the Prince Andrew interview. The winner for the Scoop of the year goes to the Daily Telegraph for the Sir Philip Green expose. Congratulations. <music> Hi judges, thank you very much for the award, it's much appreciated. This investigation took a long time, with lots of door knocks, lots of legal letters and lots of irate calls from a crazy businessman. We're really proud to receive this award today and I'd really like to thank uh, Chris Evans, Robert Wynnette, our Head of Legal, Rachel Welsh and also of course the investigations team that got this story over the line. We turn next to Newspaper of the Year, sponsored by Edwardian Hotels, London. The runners up here, Daily Express, the FT and the Times. Congratulations to the three of you. The winner, however, is the I newspaper. So as it approached its 10th anniversary, the I continued to grow in stature and authority. The judges said the competition for the paper was so fierce, four titles were shortlisted, but it was the I that received the accolade. Thereabouts, but never there at the top over the years, it was admired for concise writing across the daily paper, the wide spectrum and inspirational editing from the youngest national daily paper's editor, Oliver Duff. The Saturday edition, a comprehensive package offering a first-rate guide to the weekend, unanimously earned praise from the jury. Fantastic. Thank you very much to the London Press Club and to the judges. Uh, this is a wonderful surprise. When we launched the Eye paper 10 years ago, we were told that the Eye stood for irrelevant, ill-conceived and ill-fated. So it's obviously very satisfying to get this award after 10 years of hard work. Uh, thank you to Eye's journalists for all their exclusives. And the biggest thanks goes to Eye's readers. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be be here, you know, willing to try something different. So really this recognition is theirs for trying us and sticking by us. Thank you. Sunday newspaper of the year, sponsored by Edwardian Hotels London. We have the runner-up, the Mail on Sunday, always a strong contender and winner in previous years, of course. But this year, Sunday newspaper of the year goes to the Sunday Times, for the Sunday Times then, the judges said that while respectful of all the titles battling for a shrinking market, they said only two of them deserved to be shortlisted this year. Vigorous debate followed in deciding which one deserved to win the prize. Eventually, the Sunday Times edged out its main rival to collect an award to which it's no stranger. Investment in resources once again showed the Times package outmuscled all opposition. Excellent columnists to find sports section, plus superb arts coverage and long established magazine that's never lost its glitter that saw it triumph once more. Hello, I'm really delighted to accept the 2019 London Press Club Award for Sunday Newspaper of the Year for the Sunday Times. I'd like to thank the judges 
for their recognition of the paper's achievements last year under the editorship of Martin Ivins, my predecessor, and Sarah Baxter, his deputy. Finally, we have the Edgar Wallace Award. And this year, I'm delighted to say that it goes to Marina Hyde for The Guardian. Marina, enormous congratulations, very well deserved. I would like to thank the London Press Club very much for this very unexpected award. I can't really claim any credit for it, given the interesting times in which we're living. Um, I think I'm just really transcribing it. So I'd like to dedicate it to everybody else living through these interest interesting times. And thank you very much. It now gives me great pleasure to announce the Londoner of the Year. This Press Club Award has been given each year in recent years to an outstanding individual who we all admire and is known throughout London for their particular charm in some cases, fame in others, and in today's choice, both of those. She is a true London icon. Barbara Windsor, she chose her stage name in honour of the Queen, was born in Shoreditch and started acting aged 13, with key early roles in St Trinian's and for Joan Littlewood's theatre workshop at Stratford East. Appearances in nine carry-on films made her a star, and she later became the longest-serving landlady of the Queen Vic in EastEnders from 1994 to 2010, and again in 2013 to 2016, from which she departed with a memorable death scene. You, you will remember that. That year, she was created a dame for her work in entertainment and charity, and one of her finest later roles has been as a spokesperson for fellow dementia sufferers. London really has nothing else like this dame. We're delighted to present the award of London of the Year to Barbara Windsor. I have the pleasure also of reading some words from Barbara's husband, Scott Mitchell. He's asked me to say this on his behalf. There are two things about this award that I know make it incredibly special to Barbara. Firstly, being a true Londoner, born and bred, and being fiercely proud of this amazing city, to be named Londoner of the Year is the biggest accolade you can give her. The second part of, is the fact it's been given to her by the London Press Club. Barbara has always had a great respect for the press, as she has always understood that the two worlds of celebrity and the press are part of each other's fabric. They are both gossipy worlds which Barbara felt at home in. On behalf of Barbara, a big thank you to all of you for her award and the support you have shown us both recently throughout the years. Thank you all for staying the distance, for your support of the press club and of the industry. Journalism needs you and the public has never needed trusted journalism as much as now.